Hi, I think there are basically two fundamental philosophies when it comes to crypto. One kind of philosophy is to simply try to find the best asset and to simply buy and hold it over the long term, right? Keep hodling. The other philosophy is to try to time the market. So to buy whenever prices are depressed and to try to sell whenever the hype is at its maximum. Given the massive volatility of crypto, I personally prefer to try to time the market somewhat, at least when it comes to the altcoins or even to Ethereum. And so in this video, we're going to look at two approaches to time the Ethereum market, to basically try to find out when does Ethereum tend to rise and when does it tend to fall. And if you're a long-term follower of this channel, you're probably aware of already one of those approaches, but there's quite a likelihood you're not yet aware of the second approach. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump right in. The first approach is trading via moving averages or to be more specific by the 23 and the 39 day moving average over here we've got ethereum and we've got those two moving averages 39 in dark blue 23 in light blue and the idea is you want to buy whenever the price is above the moving average so we are in the market when momentum is bullish and we want to be outside we want to be risk off whenever the price is below those two moving averages so if you're following this channel this is not the very first time you hear about this but for the all newcomers Let's quickly explain what I mean over here. So over here, we've got the 23 day moving average and we are outside of the market whenever the price is below, right? So in gray, we've got the portfolio line. It's completely flat whenever the price is below this purple moving average. And once we go above the moving average, we follow the price movements. So we can backtest what kind of a duration for the moving average is actually the best here. Because 23 and 39 day, that sounds quite arbitrary, right? And you could take any kind of moving average in theory. But we don't want to randomly just take the 50 day or the 100 day. We want to backtest whatever worked the best in the past. And when we do such a backtest, we can see the 23 and the 39, they tended to work really well for buying and selling Ethereum. So what you see over here is the moving average duration in days and here the return per annum and here the maximum drawdown from the top to the bottom of the portfolio line. So not only do you get more return, you also get less risk, right? Buying and holding here in white would have given us more than 90% drawdown. Trading according to the moving average is less volatile. And so here I'm toggling now between the 23 and the 39 day moving average. Both of them tend to outperform buying and holding by quite a margin. Note this is a logarithmic scale. So this jump over here is almost a 10x, right? A bit less than that, but still quite a significant difference. And so when we look at Ethereum, we always want to be in the market whenever we are above those moving averages, which currently is not the case. Now, this was a quick recap of that strategy. There are more detailed videos on this channel discussing how to fine tune all of this. But instead of discussing the moving averages once again, Let's look now at the second approach. But before we do this, in case you enjoy this kind of content, please give this video a like because it will help the channel grow. Thank you. Now here's the second approach. And what we want to do is we want to find out when does Ethereum potentially peak and when does it potentially bottom? And this time we are not going to look at the direct price data of Ethereum. Instead, we look at something related that might show us how heated the market could potentially be. And that's the tether dominance so usdt.d simply search for that within trading view then you get this chart over here we can see over the long term tether becomes a more and more important part of crypto and we can see there are fluctuations over here right and so let's simply look at this let's look at the bottom over here at the 8th of november roughly so we've got this bottom over here then we've got a top here on the 20th of july and let's compare this now with Ethereum. So 8th of November, that's over here. That's exactly the highest point. And 20th of July, that's this point over here, exactly the lowest. Now, is this a coincidence? I don't think so, right? I think the money simply goes risk on and risk off from time to time. And so we can simply continue playing that game, right? Let's look here at the 20th of February where very little money was in stable coins. This here is the 20th of February. So comparatively speaking, Ethereum was relatively heated and then went down by around 30%. Now let's look here at the 11th of May. So we would expect when the price of Ethereum is high, not a lot of money is in stable coins, right? The money flows back and forth between risk on and risk off. So let's look at this. Let's look at the 
11th of May. This here is the 11th of May. So a very low value in the tether dominance. So that's interesting, right? We seem to be somewhat in a range here. We go up and down within a long-term upwards trend. And whenever the tether dominance is low, the price for Ethereum is high. Whenever the tether dominance is high, the price for Ethereum is low. And the nice thing about this is that this chart over here, it's range bound, right? It can be 0% in its lowest, it can be 100% in its highest, but it's somewhat trading in a range, which might not necessarily be the case for Ethereum, right? We don't really know where the bottom for Ethereum is. But when the tether dominance is very, very high, then maybe Ethereum is comparatively low. And when the tether dominance is very, very low, comparatively speaking, we might want to sell our Ethereum. Now, I think that approach is pretty fascinating because now we are not just looking at price data, we are actually looking at the mechanisms behind the price data of how capital flows in and out of the system. In this video, I simply want to keep it at that. I think looking at the tether dominance does make sense. There is a way though to further refine this, right? Because tether is not the only stable coin. But that kind of a refinement and a further discussion of that strategy, I leave to the premium members. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check that out. The premium membership can be found at thebitcoinstrategy.com. Link is also in the video description. In there, we discuss the crypto market daily. And we're keeping a close eye on where might Bitcoin go, where might Ethereum go, where might the altcoins go. And we look at all of those things through the lens of data analysis. So with backtested technical indicators, and with relative valuations of cryptocurrencies against each other. If you haven't yet, feel free to subscribe as well. I publish videos regularly. Last but not least, you also might consider joining our public Telegram group to be found at Bitcoin Strategy Channel. Simply search for that within the Telegram app. See you next time. Bye-bye.